thinking it was going to be long, and she did not commit at all to that forehand. But a very good start for Kwa. And this just may change the perspective of the match a little bit for Moresmo here. First serve percentage still not good enough, but it has risen somewhat. Aces, in fact, Moresmo yet to get on the board with that, but the winners really are outweighing Moresmo's and the unforced errors. That's just, that's the tally. That's the one that's really hurting her, that column. You can see 29 points ending off of her racket one way or the other. Side, didn't she? she did. She had options galore there. Moresma was had all of her weight moving forward. Very difficult even from here for Moresmo to get back up for a smash. She's very close to the net. She could have been lobbed or hit the short cross forehand angle shot there. But instead she went straight back to Moresmo. Second for Moresmo. Louise, can you look technically at how Amelie's playing at this point compared to when she was at the top of the heat? What's technically, different? she hasn't really changed anything. But confidence is an incredible thing, and that's perhaps what she's missing. Well, that is what she's missing. That self-belief. The forehand is what would break down a little bit more for Moresmo a little front on, times it a little bit late. Okay. Well, Moresmo holds for one all here in the second. And that belief for Moresmo appears to have uh, been coming back in those uh, recent outings. She uh, we mentioned ousted in the third round by Delacqua at the Australian Open, reached the quarterfinals, lost to Chuck Batazzi at Roland Garros. And in the round of 32, falling to Serena Williams. Well, it's funny you, you mentioned the French at Open, Wimbledon. but uh, Cedric and I had a little chat about that, that the French don't invariably don't do too well at the French, at the French Open. They tend to take everything a little bit uh, mentally tougher. It's it seemed to be the same the for Richard Gasquet and his results there, yeah. too. Oh. Seems as though, you know, you watch the Americans when they play here at the US Open, they rise. They really thrive off the home side crowd. And that's perhaps happens at the Australian Open. It certainly happens with the English as well at Wimbledon. But yet it doesn't happen in France with the French players. And it's never happened for Emily there. She has always played below her level. Just can't deal with the pressure.
do the French press and, and fans put more pressure yeah, there's on no their less supportive maybe than they are in some of the of their own players, the other slams? I think so. It's it's a different kind of expectation. The English are very hard. The English press are very hard on their players, and, of course, they haven't had a whole swag of uh, great players like you have had here in, in the States. But it's... There's different motivation. There's positive motivation. There's negative motivation. I guess you got to know how you're motivated. And uh, maybe the Australians and the Americans are more closely um, connected in the way they look at things and how oh, that's a good that. serve. And how they get pumped up. A little less critical and more of yeah. the gung-ho. Uh, I think Let's so. Get yeah, exactly. Well, I'm sure our cohort Virginia Wade could regale us with a few stories <laughs> yes. <laughs> from her Hall of Fame career and dealing with the expectations in Great Britain. Of course, winning Wimbledon in '77. Okay. And a hold for Julie Kwan. We're on serve here in set number two. It's 2-1 quad.